Hello mortals. As we delve into the vast expanses of the universe, we come across wondrous celestial bodies like galaxies, stars, and planets, all made up of the familiar, normal matter, except black holes, we're still scratching our heads about their singularities. But what if I told you there's a hypothesis suggesting the existence of an alternate reality, a mirror universe filled with mysterious anti-galaxies and anti-stars, and maybe even anti-black holes? Welcome to the enigmatic world of the mirror universe hypothesis, where we explore the possibility of a parallel cosmos composed of antimatter, the intriguing counterpart of matter with reverse charge, parity, and time. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. In the 1800s the study of matter made ginormous progress, mostly in the form of the discovery of different elements and their classification into the early periodic table. Some began to speculate the existence of a negative matter, but none of the ideas had a solid theoretical ground. It wasn't until 1929 that physicist Paul Dirac derived the possibility of anti-electrons from the Schrödinger equation. They were discovered by Carl Anderson, a professor at Caltech, in an experiment studying cosmic particles in a cloud chamber, in which he noticed a track left by something positively charged and with the same mass as an electron. He named them positrons. Incredibly creative name. Cosmic rays, moving at near light speeds, create a natural particle collider. In 1954, the Bevatron proton accelerator enabled humans to generate conditions for antiparticle creation. The antiproton was discovered in 1955, followed by the antineutron in 1956. The discovery of these antisubatomic particles suggests the possibility of antiatoms. Antihydrogen was the first to be produced, which was eventually followed by anti-lithium. For over half a century, our accelerators had only been capable of producing small quantities of antiparticles. That changed in 2008 when the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory developed a new method. Using a laser to blast electrons through a thin gold target, the gold's nuclei would be hit, creating a stream of matter and antimatter. Using this method, positrons were detected at a higher rate than ever before. Nothing quite beats the method of repeatedly smashing things together. With newer and larger particle accelerators, the ease with which antimatter is created got us to the point where containment was the next hurdle. In 2011, the anti-hydrogen laser physics apparatus experiment at CERN created and trapped 309 anti-hydrogen atoms, with some lasting as long as 1,000 seconds. That's longer than the average science file video. Since then, the building of extra low-energy anti-proton decelerator has allowed for the capturing of more than 100 anti-protons per second. Assuming all anti-protons are paired with positrons to make anti-atoms, it would take a mere several thousand years to make a nanogram of antimatter. That is a fairly reasonable amount of time, for someone not bound to a decaying flesh prison as myself. But even if production increased, antimatter is not an easy thing to store. The annihilation of antimatter and regular matter results in pure energy, meaning that a containment accident could result in a supernova on Earth. In the fractions of a second after the Big Bang, matter-antimatter annihilations were occurring everywhere at an unfathomably large rate. Yet somehow, about one particle of matter in every billion survived and became the matter that makes everything up. This is weird. If matter and antimatter were spawned in equal amounts, the net result should have been an empty universe devoid of matter, but alas, normal matter came out on top, leaving its inverted cousin banished to the constraints of laboratories. Scientists have found a few hints to the mechanism and effect that causes matter to be seemingly favored over antimatter, mainly in the decay of the K meson. It is comprised of a down quark and a strange antiquark with a weird preference for decaying into regular matter instead of antimatter. Though this meson does not have enough mass to decay into a proton, it does suggest the possibility that another heavier particle could do so. This is a violation of the CP symmetry. And before FBI agents knock on my door, I should explain what it means. CP symmetry states that the laws of physics should be the same if a particle is interchanged with its antiparticle. It stands for charge conjugation and parity symmetry. Charge conjugation is simply reversing the charge, while parity transformation is the mirroring of the XYZ coordinates of a particle. It was believed that all particle interactions were not affected by this change and that the laws of physics would apply the same to them. But as mentioned earlier, it was discovered that the decay of the K meson violated CP symmetry. 
While science is about hypothesizing and testing to learn and refine our models of the universe, it is something else to have your fundamental assumptions proven false. The universe seemingly does not like playing nice. Fortunately for scientists, one of the other assumed symmetries has held true, the CPT symmetry, charge, parity, and time reversal. Because CPT symmetry held true while CP symmetry did not, time reversal seems to be violated. And no, it doesn't mean you can go back in time. Mathematically it just turns time t into minus t. While time goes forward, actions do not. Momentum would be reversed, an explosion would turn into an implosion. In other words, CPT symmetry means that a universe made of antimatter with objects having their positions reflected and having their time reversed, would have our exact laws of physics, a mirror universe. It is possible for a parallel antimatter universe to exist as it is consistent with CPT symmetry. Upon the occurrence of the Big Bang, it is possible that not only our universe was formed, but also a counterpart antimatter universe, known as an anti-universe. Comprised entirely of antimatter, this concept offers an explanation for the significant imbalance of regular matter in our own universe. Just as matter and antimatter are generated in pairs, so too might our universe have been created as part of a duo, akin to a set of matching socks. That's what scientists would call nifty. Of course, there is pushback within the scientific community that such a concept is pure speculation, as it is difficult to understate how hard it would be to detect a parallel universe that exists outside our own. Like the missing sock that got lost in the dryer, we may never find it. Instead of trying to find antimatter outside our universe, let's take our view a bit closer to home. Imagine the far future, long after the assimilation of flesh by machine. A probe is sent to land on a distant planet, only for this planet to be made of antimatter. The resulting explosion would far surpass the largest nuclear detonations we've ever witnessed. Needless to say, it would make for a very interesting second-place science fair project. While we have not discovered large objects of antimatter in space, we know that some cosmic rays are made of antimatter and that the Van Allen radiation belts caused by the Earth's magnetic field could create the conditions to trap antimatter. So far there is little to suggest that antimatter stars and antimatter galaxies exist or if they even can, however, the prospect of significant amounts of antimatter existing is far more likely and possible to verify than the previously mentioned mirror universe hypothesis. The discovery of anti-stars close enough for observation would allow us to further study antimatter. Imagine how much we could learn from a star-anti-star -star collision far enough from us so that it wouldn't immediately annihilate us but close enough to study. Do you know how much YouTube content my creator could milk from that? Such an event is unlikely, but there are more reasonable ways that antimatter stars and galaxies could be detected. For one, these anti-stars should behave similarly to stars in that they should release cosmic rays. As for how these would differ from normal cosmic rays, the assumption is that they would have a high amount of antiparticles. If we were to detect a sudden burst of antiparticles from a section of the sky, we could determine the general location of the source. Although this would not immediately confirm the existence of anti-stars, it would be, as scientists always say when they aren't sure, a point of interest worth investigating. Scientists are rigorously testing the standard model of particle physics, which includes the study of antimatter. It was only in January last year that a CERN study concluded with 97% accuracy that antimatter is affected by gravity in the same way as regular matter. These discoveries will either break or reinforce our current models of quantum physics. Given that the past century of physics broke our classical understanding, it is almost foolish to be certain that our current models will be able to survive this century and the next. As the James Webb Space Telescope scans the vast void for new formations, it has already discovered galaxies and stars that are older than we expected. Perhaps this telescope will be the one to find anti-stars and anti-galaxies. Or perhaps there really are no vast islands of antimatter dotting the void. We may be doomed to have only our small little blue ball of rock and the pathetically small amount of antimatter that we can produce on it. Even if the answers we find are underwhelming or unsurprising, antimatter forms only a portion of the quest of unraveling the secrets of the universe. The universe is so vast, so apathetic to us in its grandiosity, that there is an everlasting supply of knowledge to satiate our desire for more. Now you can go ahead and continue relaxing before you inevitably will have to return to work or school in order to become an efficient gear of the society machine trapped on the blue pale dot.
As we conclude our exploration of antimatter and anti-galaxies, remember that expanding your knowledge in this area and beyond is made simpler with Brilliant.org. Their captivating and interactive teaching methods enable you to easily grasp complex concepts that are fundamental to today's cutting-edge technologies, such as artificial intelligence and data science. Embracing lifelong learning is essential for professional success, and Brilliant's Computer Science Fundamentals course serves as the ideal starting point. By dedicating just 15 minutes a day, you'll wrap your mind around computational thinking, from everyday tasks to algorithms. Brilliant's interactive learning approach, which incorporates drag-and-drop coding, interactive charts, and visually engaging course material, has been demonstrated to be six times more effective than passive methods like watching lectures. Not only does Brilliant help you cultivate technical expertise, but it also bolsters your creative problem-solving abilities. By refining your intuition and analytical thinking, you'll be better prepared to tackle challenges in all aspects of your life. Seize this opportunity to elevate your scientific literacy. Visit brilliant.org slash science file or click the link in the description for a 30-day free trial. Act promptly, as the first 200 users will enjoy a 20% discount on an annual subscription.